I needed a video that wasn't so policy heavy, so it didn't take me a whole month to write. So here we are, talking about the three Amtrak routes that are the easiest to electrify. Amtrak's best train routes in the country are undoubtedly the ones that run under electrification. So for many reasons, electrification is the answer to a lot of our railroading problems. But for those who don't know, let's go over the benefits that electrification usually brings. Electric locomotives are usually more powerful. Electric locomotives can be lighter. You can run EMUs, and with that you can get better acceleration. There are no prime movers, aka the engines, and that means that electrics are inherently more reliable. They're not diesel powered, so there's no local pollutants. The grid can be powered by any source and can be switched to clean energy power later or whenever is necessary. Uh, generally, electrification comes with better service. Electrification means lower costs, which also means that you can make more of a profit in the long run. Higher speeds can easily be achieved. Trains are generally quieter. And no, double stacks are not an excuse. Stop coping. Anyway, let's talk about the first route or corridor that can be electrified. So all of the corridors that I'm about to talk about have one thing in common. Either Amtrak or the states that the corridors exist in control the lines or own the right of way, meaning like the tracks and all of the ground around the train tracks are owned by Amtrak or the state. This makes it incredibly easy to do any project, meaning it's in the control of Amtrak, like they can do anything they want. They could do this tomorrow if they got the money or just wanted to. Anyway, the first corridor is this, the New Haven to Springfield corridor. This corridor is 65 miles long. It hosts the Vermonter, the Northeast Regional, the Valley Flyer, and the Hartford Commuter Rail. It serves three cities and is connected to the electrified Northeast Corridor. Uh, it serves New Haven, obviously, anything in between Hartford and Springfield. So it's a very important for Amtrak for a lot of reasons. The Springfield Corridor would harken back to what Amtrak has actually done before in the late 90s, which is electrify the New Haven to Boston route. Uh, so it's very similar in that aspect, but we'll be talking more about the New Haven to Boston route in a little bit. The Springfield Corridor is also a great candidate because a good portion of the route has been upgraded to 110 miles an hour, but you'll see the similarity between that and the next two uh, other routes that are very similar to this. Anyway, let's go to the next one. So when we're going to talk about the Empire Corridor today, we're going to only be talking about the section from New York City to Schenectady, or just north of Albany if you don't know where that is, uh, because the actual... Uh, Empire Corridor actually goes all the way from New York to Albany and then all the way to Buffalo. Uh, but actually talking about the whole thing in detail and all the issues with it would take a whole nother video, which I might do in the f near future. Anyway, uh, we're just talking about the first segment, which Amtrak owns. Uh, well, Metro North owns from New York to Poughkeepsie, and then Amtrak owns from Poughkeepsie to Schenectady. So that's the section we're focusing on because that's the one Amtrak could change tomorrow if it wanted. This first segment is 150 miles long. It hosts the Empire Service, Ethan Allen Express, Lakeshore Limited, Maple Leaf, and the Adirondack. It serves New York City and three other cities along with uh, different through services. Metro North shares a line up to until Poughkeepsie, like I said. This line has also been studied for future uh, expansion and high-speed rail projects. Uh, it's also getting custom train sets for their west side connection, which again, this is the dumb shit Amtrak does sometimes, which is instead of actually doing the 10 miles of electrification to get out of New York City, they want to order these like weird battery tender locomotives. This is frustrating to say the least. I just, just electrify the 10 miles of section on the West Side Connection. That's all you need. Uh, and then you get out and you can run diesel for the rest of it. Whatever stupid stuff you want to do. Uh, but the Empire Corridor is a perfect place to actually do electrification because most of the corridor is upgraded to like higher track speeds, either 80 or 110 miles an hour. So again, just like the Springfield Corridor, it would be perfect for electrification. But let's move on to our third route that we can electrify. And it's a little bit different because it's not in the Northeast. 
So the last route we're going to be talking about serves Chicago all the way to Detroit. It's the Wolverine. And Amtrak and the Michigan Department of Transportation own the entire right-of-way from Detroit to Michigan City. So it's the logical line to electrify when it comes to the Midwest services. There's only one issue with it. After Michigan City, Amtrak has to run on freight railroad tracks. And when it comes to electrification, they are incredibly hard to work with to actually get electrification done. But there's something that uh, Amtrak has been looking at recently, or there's been rumors about them wanting to use. And that's the South Shore Line right-of-way. The South Shore Line is a commuter rail operation that runs from Chicago to South Bend. It originates from Millennium Stadium in Chicago and uses 1.5 kilovolt DC overhead electrification. This could obviously be a little bit of a hang-up for Amtrak because most new electrification projects use 25 kilovolt AC power, which is quite different. But this is actually not so different from some of the European uh, electrification projects. They have come up with novel solutions like electric locomotives that could easily switch between AC and DC while in operation. Here in the US, we've also had similar problems. The Metro North M8s can switch from AC overhead power to DC third rail power. So again, electrifying the Wolverine corridor and then using the South Shore Line to get into Chicago wouldn't be much of an issue. The only issue is once you're in Chicago, if Amtrak did want to use Union Station, they would need some kind of connector from the South Shore Line to Union Station. Uh, this would require electrifying an old freight connector that's between the two, uh, but honestly that wouldn't be that hard compared to the rest of the project and then they would need to electrify some of the yard around Union Station. That's honestly the most contentious part. But since we've covered all that, we sort of need to come back to how everything sort of fits together. Uh, remember that New Haven to Boston project that I talked about earlier? Well, that electrification project went from 1995 to 1999 and in 1995 it cost $321 million. 321 million uh, adjusted for inflation is 634 million to, in today's money. Uh, at 157 miles long, it cost about 4 million per mile to electrify. This gives us a rough estimate for the costs of the routes here. So the Springfield Corridor would cost roughly 260 million. The Empire Service with its first section would cost 600 million and the Michigan service would cost $1 billion if the South Shore Line gets upgrades, but otherwise it would cost around $800 million. All of these are very affordable projects compared to the stupid amount of money we pay on highway projects every year in all these states. It's just very frustrating that Amtrak has not done any electrification projects since the New Haven to Boston route. This seems to be a management issue. And if you look at the presidents that were in control of Amtrak during the time when they were actually electrifying, they had actual initiative. This is in contrast to some of the CEOs that Amtrak has chosen recently in the past. Anderson was an airline executive that came into Amtrak to try to make it profitable. You don't need to make public services profitable. You just need to make them serve the public. One of the thing, ways you can make it serve the public is by you doing electrification projects. Also, before we end the video, there are some honorable mentions of routes that are also good ideas to electrify. Uh, first one is the Pacific Surfliner, uh, which runs along the uh, coast from LA to San Diego. Uh, another one is the Vermont Services. Most of Vermont's right-of-ways are owned by the state, uh, but honestly, service just needs to increase first before they should probably electrify. Uh, Virginia services, so DC to Richmond is the obvious corridor to electrify. Uh, the state and local groups are actually in the process of trying to get the right of way from CSX so that it could be upgraded for faster service anyway. Uh, another one is the Down Easter. Uh, Pan Am and now CSX owns the corridor, but it has low freight volumes. Um, it should probably be double tracked again before electrification though. Anyway, that's it for today's video. I wanted to make something that's slightly a bit easier to digest than uh, the last one. Um, anyway, thanks to my Patreons for always supporting me and keeping these videos ad-free. Uh, and uh, thanks to you guys for watching. Uh, if you want to see more stuff, check out my second channel down in the description. Also, uh, merch if you also want to support the channel but don't care about Patreon. All right, see you in the next one.